6 p.m. We we'll call the select board meeting of October 2nd to order. Uh, There's one addition to the agenda under warrants or bills for payments is Conservation Commission number three, CC3. Uh, that's the only uh, addition to the agenda. Uh, so let's review and approve the minutes of the previous meetings. First, the September 18th select board meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review those? You can do those together because everybody was at them. Paul was on. Oh, Paul was on Zoom. We're at yeah. Zoom together. So the 18th and the 25th was a budget work session. So both of those we can work to approve. I move that we approve the minutes of those date, two dates. I'll they second it. All right, any discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes of September 18th and September 25th, say aye. 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 Any against? All right. Uh, there's three warrants, warrant 7, 7P, and CC3 as discussed. I'll make a motion that we approve payment of warrant 7, 7P, in Conservation Commission number three. No second. All right, uh, any discussions? I had a question. Um, when there's a payment um, for taxes paid in advance, can you explain how that works? We, if someone pays in advance, we send that back. The mm -hmm. I think we have to. I wish that Lori would be able to answer that better. Because um, I used to, you know, when we had some land that extended into Brookline. It was such a very small payment for Brookline taxes. And I would always pay off four payments at once because otherwise it was four payments for $40 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and that never, I didn't get a check back. I don't understand why we need mm -hmm. to refund that. So maybe I'll ask Glory. Yeah. Or Did he sell the land? Is that what happened? That would be a well, reason. Refund? I mean, no, I know, I know the thing you're talking about. I mean, would he have maybe sold the land during the year or something? Unless it and was that being even make any sense held and pulled maybe. out by escrow at the bank. Oh, and so good. they were, if it was a lapse, and they want to make sure that the taxes got paid on time. Because okay. even if it's held, I think, and maybe Gene might know this better. <laughs> no, don't but, ask. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think that it, even if it's held out, through escrow, mm -hmm. it's still your responsibility that the taxes are paid on time. This, this might explain it right now. Okay. I know in Brattleboro, sometimes I double up on the taxes and there's no problem in Brattleboro with right. it. Mm -hmm. so. Right, that's what I would do in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. While well, Alex reads that, just a summary, uh, mm -hmm. warrant seven is for 56, a little over $56,000. Uh, 35,000 of that is Belco, who's working on the park lot and bridge and that was paid out of ARPA so it's our, that 35 of 56 is not town money per se. Uh, 7P is payroll $11,442 which is about normal and CC7 for Conservation Commission is, is $78.91 it's for wood. Uh, they did a work, work party on the stairs and finished off adding a little more wood to some sanding and that's the stairs look really nice. They do look great yeah they're very convenient. Uh, any further discussion on this? All right, so all those in favor of approving Warrant 7, 7P, and CC3, say aye. 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 Any no's? All right. Uh, any ARPA funding aside updates aside from that payment? Just the payment that in Warrant 7. Uh, did we hear anything back from who has money that we need to make sure that they're going to use? Yeah, I haven't heard back yet. Okay. All right. The school? No, no. It was the rec board. The rec board. And Lee, but I'll, I'll corner Lee when he's here for a budget meeting. Right, <laughs> right. Okay. We'll follow up on that. Yep. All right, visitors and public comment. Welcome, everybody. Who wants to go first? He's got something. <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> well, I have a, a couple things. Um, the first thing you know about, because I sent you a letter and mm -hmm. on the um, Miller Fund, um, I, um, I'm not here to talk about it because I know it's going to be on the agenda in the agenda in the future. Um, but I, I did find something else since I sent the letter. And one of the things that I found was um, that um, 
it was $955 paid to the youth services out of it, which certainly does not go to the intent of the Miller Fund. And there was something paid for um, free and reduced lunches, which, you know, I know it, it was for a good, you know, good thing to do, but um, I've been on the school board and maybe a school board member could help me on this, um, <laughs> that um, I know in Dharmaston when I was on the school board, we weren't allowed to take donations or something for anything that like was in the budget or whatever. And I don't know whether that's changed or not. So I, I'm just curious. I don't know. You know, okay. I don't know. No, I don't know. So um, I'm going to, what I did, thanks to the Mr. Chair over there, uh, here's some decent copies of what I sent you. <laughs> do, I, do I have to hold them and read them sideways? No, I'm sorry. My, <laughs> right. my printer and computer, they just weren't working together. Oh, Paul went and got me a good, nice printer. But, you know, I like the little simple one that only had a couple of controls on it. <laughs> so Great, thank you. Um, and you can make copies for everybody sure. else, and it might be a little easier to read than what I sent yeah. you. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, um, is there anything the select board can do about all the signs that are being put on? And they're not political signs. They're, yep. mm -hmm. And they're in the right of way, the road right of way, yep. which is... Yeah. So your, those, I emailed uh, Lee over the weekend when I saw them, the roofing signs. Well, there's roofing signs, yep. but there's also other signs yep. everywhere. And, and even, you know... I'm not even going to bring up names, but there are other signs, and there's three signs in one spot for yep. the same thing. And yep. um, I just think it's a, it doesn't add to our, the character of our town. Yeah, so the, the ones that came up this weekend, the roofing signs, there were four town signs. There was mm -hmm. one at Bottom Middle Road. And so I looked into the ordinances, and if you're a business, you have to have a permit to do it. Oh. So I asked Roger to make sure that was correct. He said, yes, that is correct. And I'd already asked Lee that on Monday morning as they're driving around, if they are there, if they're there, take them down and store them at the town garage. Because if somebody comes and wants their signs, they can have their signs back. I don't want to destroy them. Because there was the roof in one just at the foot of Tucker Reed Road. Yes. And then it somehow got, that, that, I think that got moved over into Route 5. Right. So so the road crews are out and about. We'll keep an eye out yeah. for that. Okay. Obviously, political signs can, can stay, but business signs, you have to have a Yeah, I hate them. the political signs. You go over to so. Keaton and <clears throat> Right. Everything's just like well, New Hampshire. crazy. Yeah. Um, but we do have billboard laws and, and other things here. Yeah, yeah. So. Like Thank there's you. an ordinance that if it's a business, you have to have a permit. Thank yeah. you very much. But well, isn't there, there I, thought I thought there was, was an exception for <clears throat> temporary signs, like, that's you know, you know Mama Need Painting or something. They well, put that's, their sign up. So that's why I asked Roger. So I'm like, because he would know. Uh, he, he agreed that if they could have up. Now we can, we can re attack that. I think that's that. wrong. I, I, I think when you're doing work on a property, you can. It's more of a yeah. traditional yeah. thing. Well, see, they put up a sign know. on my well, that, property, that's and I did not give them permission. Well, that's not right. <laughs> so that would be different, but a dozen signs advertising your roofing company not yeah. at your site is, I yeah. think, no, probably. That's, no. That was the right. roofing sign that they put on my property. Oh, oh, did they? Yeah. Yeah, so they just came over the course of a night or an evening and put up like 20 of them around town, yeah. just okay. on the corners and yeah. on the edge of the streets. But you're right, if you're. So they weren't relevant to the. To the land. No, no, they weren't on. No. They were just on, pro, on roadsides. But I think there is an exception yeah. if you know Mommy painting is sure. doing some painting on oh, the on. church. They can yeah. put a sign up with their. Yeah, I wouldn't have said anything on. about that. This is just a, I'll call it a littering of signs. Mm -hmm. Not. But my not question is, was were they physically on public land or private land? They I'll were see. on my land. So, yeah. so yours is on your land. Yeah. I mean, and that's obvious. So, take it away. I mean, it's all, as I know from the roads, the, the, everything next to a road is publicly. We just get a right away for the road. So, I think it's four feet. Oh, so if it's in the public, if it's in your right of way, it's still my land. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank the you. The town doesn't own anything above the actual road. I know, Which, but there's yeah. the right of way. So, yeah. okay. so not so that I have a sign for it. right away or it's on public land. <laughs> Uh, Probably. So, Thank you. Yep. I hope I'm right. Somebody will check me on that. But I remember doing did a lot of research on roads. I could last have sworn year. it was four feet in from the road. Is it's 25 feet from the center road. line each way. That big. Okay. Is the right of way. Okay. And the center line keeps moving. <laughs> Depending on who's painted. Yeah. Well, if the town has easement for your property, so then, then right. the edge of the road is is yours. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's yours. But I'm, I'm saying like, so say for instance that the one you're talking about over there that, that I saw. I couldn't see how East far West that was. Road. Yeah. Yeah, that's my property across oh, the street. Oh, that's your property that's, too. Okay. Right. Really, on the other side of the road. Yes. Oh, okay. Then okay. that's our then property stakes. Can you prove it? I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I had it surveyed. Yeah. You're welcome to look. <laughs> Uh, so as, as far as the Miller Fund, when we talk about it, it'll definitely be on the agenda. So, and I may have, <clears throat> I was talking to somebody in my house who I won't mention uh, <laughs> about your letter. And I think I probably was a little flippant when I was speaking about it as if whatever the school says, we're just going to say yes. And that's not the case. So we've asked them to give us some verbiage, some ideas of what's going on down there at the school because we may or may not know. And I know she presented that there's programs that existed that don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to gather that information from them. So whatever we decide to write up or how we're going to do it, it'll be open for everybody to come have a discussion. So you got legal advice. Well, she can't practice in the state of Vermont, so that's no. not legal. Um, no, so. I, I think I, I got that finally. I finally got to see the uh, the video and it made a little, little clearer to me that um, and that really I think what they're doing is just bringing you ideas of what they might use it for. That's right. And then there are some things in that, but the, I think it's your prerogative to take the things in that that don't pertain anymore. That's right. So yeah, I, we will, we'll oversee it and make sure that it's in place. I'll be here when it's on the agenda, right. but anyway, that, <laughs> I had that, that to say. One of the reasons we need to examine this is that you know, now the school provides lunch for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that you has know, to so, come out. So yeah, that I understand out. that. Okay. But uh, you need to take it out. It's not the school's responsibility. Right. Right. You guys oh, yeah. are responsible for this. Yep. I, I said more than I intended to say That's tonight. Fine. No, it's, it's, it's good to have it out there. Um, anything else, Jean? It, well, I'm just here to back Jody up. Yeah, I mean, are you the muscle? We, we, <laughs> she, she is the muscle. <laughs> No, well, just just because we have known each other forever, we always have the same types of interest sure. for money for the town. Um, and Maria and I were auditors for many years, and we were we would look at the Miller Fund mm -hmm. and see what was happening to make sure that things were being done correctly. And one of my concerns was to really understand what needy means. But I do think that it's a good idea to have the school involved in a, in in some in some ways. But it does thing. does need to be your just you know it does need to be your decision. And if you get people from the town who are interested, like we are, um, and, and need any background from being residents for so many years, which we have been. The, you've been longer um, than I have. Yeah, I think you've been longer than <laughs> I have. Yeah, just a few years. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think that that would we just I should bring that to your attention um, because I I always look at that town report very very carefully always, right. and um, just just know your the other eyes are watching. Good. Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, she's our memory, is what she right. is. Pardon? You're our memory. <laughs> Well, the genesis of it for me and why it came up originally was, again, reviewing all these stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I've been here a year and a half on the board, yeah. and there's been no, no requests at all. And so I'm like, well, what's going on with this? Like, what are, mm -hmm. you can read the parameters. It's like, is there no need? Has it kind of fallen by the wayside because additional programs have been brought on board? So that's what started mm -hmm. the discussion. Um, yes. And there's other things on there that yeah. start discussions too. And Not on that one particular, but other funds. That's one of the reasons yeah. that I write also brought it up because I realized that you, you're you fairly new, you're fairly new, mm -hmm. you've been here a little while, he's been there a while, but you know. Um, Maria just, forever. Uh, Maria, <laughs> Maria knows all about this and um, <laughs> she's been on the board for a long time. So, um, and so people get on the board, they change, they don't know the history and they don't bother to ask the history. So mm -hmm. that's. Thanks for coming. Well, I have. I also oh. have a copy of the letter that's signed by Ralph Chapman from Probate Court, and a copy of the guidelines that were made. Let's see, two thousand nine by the Select Board. I don't know if you have those. I have the letter. This one. This I don't one, have the first one. one. 
They have. They don't have. They don't have them. Okay. Well, I'll just give it to both of them. I don't need an extra yeah, piece we'll, of paper. We'll, we'll put them in the Miller Fund. If you would so like them. Yes. Yeah. As we work through this. Thank you. Please. Thanks. Thank you for listening. Oh yes, no problem. Well, that was typed on a typewriter. <laughs> so the, pro the, the probate one was typed on a typewriter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's what how we learned to type. That's I, I learned to type. I, don't say we because I don't type. I learned to type on a manual. So in school. All right. Uh, thank you again. Um, Lee didn't give me any update. He did put send us another picture of the park lot and deck. Um, I think we're within a couple of weeks of that being open for the. Looks nice. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks flat. It looks level. Looks flat. It looks good. It's good. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll find out right away when I drive my dog around. Correspondence for information. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything on here of note. Anything anybody wants to talk about about in the for information? All right. Uh, new business. The so same brook erosion. So here's the update for that. The state is coming down tomorrow morning to look at the property. So as we know that we couldn't get any bids for doing the engineering work. And without that, we can't, they can't actually do the work. So we did two RFPs, got no responses. I talked with the state both times. It's like we're having the same problems in other cities. So they're, they've are they been working around trying to figure out how to do this. So they're gonna have some folks come down to do some final look at the property. This is uh, Jim Boyd Road. The old trailer park there? No, oh, just not the other, not the, um, the other one. Slab Hollow. Slab area. Hollow didn't, so when we originally went through for the process uh, and came back, none of them wanted to participate down in Slab Hollow. Ooh, their house is going in the brook. So, uh, so right now it's just Jim Boyd Road. Mm -hmm. um, so what's going to happen tomorrow is they're going to come in. They have to, what they're going to have to do is look on, they're going to have to access from the other side. Mm -hmm. The creek so they have to come in and do an archaeological <laughs> check to make sure there's nothing there and i think they're then going to come up with an acceptable plan that then we can put out an rfp for people to do work and so anybody here you know, anyone in town or local wants to bid on doing the work reinforcing the bank should be able to so hopefully within a week we can do another rfp for the work mm -hmm. and then uh we'll probably try to set a short timeline on that try to get before i don't want to wait a month <clears throat> So maybe we'll set it for two weeks to get bids in and then find a bid that can do it. So the whole project, just in case you don't know, the town has to be the agent for this. It's not the, the homeowner. <clears throat> so that was a bigger deal where we were going to have to pay 25% where the landowner was because we were going to have to pay the 25 and get the money back from the landowner or get the money from the landowner first. But 100% uh, funding came through. Mm -hmm. So now it's not costing the landowners anything. So that'll be a little easier on us financially. So, Are you going to be able to meet the state there? Or... Well, I asked Mike, if, I'm like, do you need me there? And he goes, no. He goes, they know where they're going. They've got the layout. Okay. Um, so, Samantha's stepson has taken over yeah. kind of courting the property. So he may be there to talk to him. He's aware that he can't make any deals or, um, but Mike said, I don't need to be there. Okay. So we'll follow up on that. So may I ask? What's going to happen at Slab Hollow? Anything? Right now, there's nothing at, at Slab Hollow. Well, I mean, obviously, on the, I want to say the right direction, the west side of the road, that house, they reinforced their own last year. The the Slab Hollow, the, the part of the problem is, because I asked them last year, I'm like, what about the stretch where the road's having a problem? It's closest to the bridge. Oh, yeah. Um, this program doesn't cover property municipal land this only covers private property right so if, if they were going to do it it would have been on the property right reinforce the property pull all those tires out of there but they wouldn't have done any work on the the width beyond the bridge that's town road that is something we have something we have to look at in the future but the house itself has now got this huge wash right next to this right yeah. next to it yeah yeah we looked at it um so we went in there so that was, um, I will double check with them, but I, I was pretty clear when I asked them, I said, you know, there are three sites, only one was participating because the other ones didn't want it, I think. They didn't 25%. want to pay 25. And I said, now that it's 100%, can I go back to them? Uh, and it didn't appear that you could, but mm -hmm. I'll double check with them this week. 
That's a shame. Uh, okay. And find out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Uh, seems like it's been going on forever. I mean, it's more than a year. And so. it's going to get worse. Yes. So town and drug policy. So this has been on the agenda for a while. So we talked about it last meeting. And what I was going to redraft was something that Paul brought up. The question was, if there's an accident that occurs, and somebody's driving a vehicle, for instance, what's the process for that? That's already in there. So if there's an accident, there's a, a decision matrix, I'll call it. It basically says whether there'll be a test or not. We have the copy somewhere. Does somebody have the... Yeah, I saw it in one. That's one we're going to... Is it Lucas's? Yeah, I think so. It's probably behind that. In fact, give me that whole folder because we're going to need... Yeah. To please, there. thank you. It's the alcohol board one I can never remember. Maria remembers this stuff. Right. So the update I was going to make was... Right, so if there's an accident, uh, it, it talks about what we'll do in the course mm -hmm. of it. So that covers the, we're not testing somebody, there's just been an accident, what that happens. Has there been bodily harm, has been death, whatever. Um, there's a matrix that says, what do we do as far as citation and alcohol tests, post-accident testing, which will be completed within two hours of the accident, which then takes us straight to the, what we were rewriting was, we just wanna make sure we have everything in here and that it made sense uh, for the testing portion of it. And so we made some updates based on recommendations from BLCT, who oversaw it. Yes? Um, does it say anything about the high rate of speed causing the accidents? Because speed is another issue that's been on the select board's plates for 50 years here. For town employees? This oh, this is, this, is this, is oh. Okay. this is just drug and alcohol. This is just drug and alcohol. Oh, I, did, I, I missed that. I, I thought it was anybody who was drunk and went over the, oh, yeah, the no. bank. Yeah. That's the share. I'm not going to go out there yeah. and pull them out. <laughs> and so I didn't make any changes. We, we talked about what we had last week, and I was going to input that, but I didn't because it's already in there. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of at the point of um, getting ready to sign this. Uh, if anyone wants to make a motion, and further discuss it. I'll make a motion that we approve and sign the updated drug and alcohol policy. I'll second it. All right. Any further discussion? Does anybody else have anything um, that we haven't discussed on this? Well, once again, I, you know, I agree with it, but I still think it's a little too lenient. Right. And that's in the portion we wrote, right, still. So basically what we did include it is, let's go to section six, because that was the update. Consequences, right? So I did include that there's always an option for termination. Right. It's always available. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but I tried to make sure that, because you brought that up, mm -hmm. that you know, you may be suspended, you may be, but you can be terminated at any point on the drug testing. So I think it's in there, Yeah. but I, so I understand that. Um, if that appeases your, not appease, addresses your um, concern. Yeah. Um, anyone else have any input? All right, so all those in favor of, of, of approving the updated Town of Dumbaston Drug and Alcohol Policy for CMV operators, uh, say aye. Uh -huh. aye. Aye. And anyone against? All right, so there'll be, um, that's one more signature thing for everybody because everybody's going to sign that before we leave. Uh, any other new business that I forgot? Oh, yeah, so Scott and Farm event. Yep, that's coming. Um, just before we agenda, adjourn and come back in as a liquor board. So, Maria's job. Yeah, that's, she's got the lingo. <laughs> so, do we want to? Uh, so, we got this letter on sports volunteers. Did you guys read this? Mm -hmm. It just came in today, yeah. Yeah, it just came in today for the meeting. Basically, how we screen them. Right. Yeah. So do we have any experience with, it came from the rec board. Right. Well, I, I think anybody that's going to be dealing with kids should be vetted. Sure. I mean, we don't know if they have been arrested for child abuse right. in the past or a sexual molestation. Right. We don't know that. And yes, they are volunteers, but still, they should be vetted. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, a quick background check by the, the police. Right. Do we know sense. the current process, though? I didn't know. The rec board, I don't think, has met a lot recently. They just got a whole bunch of new members. Yeah. Like right. six of them, seven of them. Mm -hmm. So I think they're more active. Mm -hmm. So it's a good question. Should and we kick it back to them and say, do you want to 
provide input on how volunteers should be vetted? Well, but that's what they asked us. Oh. They said our thoughts were questionnaires, interviews, background checks, safe sports training. Um, I would imagine that the background check is what everybody's most concerned about. Um, as part of that background check, will you require fingerprinting? Well, th this is the question. How much does a background check cost? Who's going to pay for it? How deep do you want it to be? Do you want it to just call the police on a police record? Do you want to run fingerprints? What? So that's something that I guess we have to decide or figure out. And maybe the best option is to have them come here in two weeks. Have we done this in the past? No. Um, no, the teachers vetted. So can I say if um, uh, with the school board, D7 policy um, requires fingerprinting as well, mm -hmm. if that volunteer is ever going to be alone with a student, mm -hmm. if that volunteer is going to be present with the student at, with another fully vetted individual, then that volunteer does not need to be fingerprinted. Now, do the teachers have to be fingerprinted? The teachers are automatically fingerprinted. Oh, okay. As a, as a school employee, those are the fully vetted individuals. Mm -hmm. But for example, I work with students. So as a board member, I have been vetted and I have been fingerprinted. That's a good point. They should probably be fingerprinted also. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's... There is a charge for fingerprinting. Sure. Sure. I, the last I recall, it was forty dollars. Right. But and that the background been, check from that, or does that fingerprinting include a background check? I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. So, and who does that? The, 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 fi the sheriff's, sheriff's, sheriff's office. Oh, the sheriff's yeah. office. Right. So it seems like a, we'll, we'll use we'll use background check as a, as a overarching term here. So whatever that D seven process is. Do you know who oversees that? Is it the school or is it the board? It is implemented by administration at this point. The board establishes the policy, but the implementation of it is um, administrative. Is it a Wyndham Southeast school yes. district policy? Yes. Okay. yes. So if we were to contact them to find out what that process is for, again, background checks, we probably can get that information from them. I would suggest you call Mo Hart at the central office. All right. And that will give us somewhere things. to go. <laughs> and and then if, and we'll come back and talk about this in next meeting, see what we found. Um, and the policy is listed on the school board's website. It's D as in dog seven. Yep, got it. Perfect, thank you. And so, I mean, it sort of works out well because if it's something we need to put some money aside for in the budget, then you know we'll make a guesstimate at how many people we might be doing per year, and figure out what the cost is. So if it's something the town's going to pay for, we've got money for it. And I'll get in touch with Mark and see what you know what okay. he does for background checks and yeah. fingerprinting. How much? I didn't know you were on first name basis well, with the sheriff. The, yes, terms I am. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, should it be wrapped into the rec board budget? Well, the funny thing is we don't give any money to the rec board. Generally, it's, it's, there's none, but we could have a rec board line item, and that's specifically what it's for. So when it shows up in the town report or people ask about it, they know that that's what it's for. Is this for somebody who might be coaching or is yeah. always with a whole group of people? Or is this with someone who might be one-on-one -on -one with people? Well, I think it's hard to know, right? So mm -hmm. you have a coach with the mm -hmm. team, but there's no, you know, unless you're going to tell all the kids that there needs to be at least three of you at all times, it starts getting a little strained, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't know when there's going to be yeah. an individual. A soccer goalie might right. get some extra. One yeah. student might come early, you know. Right, or stay That's late. That's right. So, yeah. so yeah, I think if they're looking for mostly coaches, but really anyone who. But as you said, so if, if the coach is vetted and they have an assistant who's coming, a high school kid to help out, as long as the coach is there, that covers the other volunteer. That's absolutely right. But if that volunteer is ever alone with students, you're in violation. Right. And so, the, but so. And it's more than just doing that background check to see whether you're on some registry or not. It's also the fingerprinting. Fingerprinting. Yes. And the fingerprinting, <clears throat> at least at the school board level, at the policy level, let me say, is a once in a lifetime 
event, the fingerprinting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the vetting with the registry is annualized. Okay. All right, well, we'll get the process. <laughs> and, and it may be one of these things that part of the process is going to be that if there's a volunteer that's going to come help, that making sure that the coaches are aware that until that person's vetted, that person can't be alone with students. They essentially have to be with you, the vetted person, at all times. The policy does state that because there's a delay in being fingerprinted, that if you have the appointment to be fingerprinted, you are now able to be alone with students. Right. Hmm. So, um, so this is you have the first page of the policy, which is essentially philosophical, and then you have procedures backing it up. The next two pages of the okay. policy. All right, does well, this let's... does it apply to chaperones as well? On class yes, it groups? does. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. I do believe. That, I yes, I think that would be the bigger category. Wouldn't it? It's probably the same process, though, right? Yes, it is. So I think the yes. board's just interested in if they have coaches that come in to volunteer. So Can basically, they meet the same room? requirement as everyone else would. If it's the parent. Uh, yeah. Transporting, let's say, going to an off-site school event. So I can I can talk about it in that context. Um, and is transporting their own child. So be it. If that parent is transporting other children with permission from those families, so be it. But if it's a volunteer who is helping the school community transport students from one location to another, always a school-sponsored event, you've got a whole different Mm -hmm. issue having to do with liability on the part of um, the district. All right, that's great information. Glad you're here. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good meeting to show up at. Uh, all right, well, we'll follow up on that. charge? Uh, I could. You know who's good for following up on that? Somebody who used to be on the school board. Okay, I'll take it on. <laughs> you were there's only one here. Oh, I knew that. Are we on the school board at one point? Yeah, I knew it was Tom. No, Thomas was a great member when he was so on. So, Tom, yeah, if you could find out the D7 okay. process and talk to Mo Hart, uh, we might be able to call something and then we'll add them to the agenda. The rec board. Not all of them have to come next. Yeah. I mean, they all can if they want. I mean, who doesn't want to be here? I would say whoever their chair is. Their chair can come in, we'll, and hopefully we'll have some information for them. Because the rec board belongs to us. Yes, that's a town. Board. Town. It does not yes. belong to the school. So essentially, what we're probably looking at doing is implementing the school policy for the rec board. The same yeah. process. Because they offer. I mean, in the past, it was. It wasn't just children. I mean, they would have adult programs. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Uh, any other new business that showed up that anybody's excited about? All right, Maria. All right. I'll make a motion that we recess the meeting and convene as a liquor control board. I want to second that. All those in favor? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, we've got three requests, all from Scott Farm, one on the 13th of this month, one on the 17th, and one on the 14th of next month. It's catering, uh, the Heirloom Apple Festival, there's going to be 500 people, that's on the 13th. They're going to have an indoor business dinner on the 17th, there's about 40 people, and another indoor business dinner on the 14th of November, about 100 people. Uh, and that's it. I move that we approve the three events on October 13th, October 17th, and November 14th. No second. All right, any further discussion? Will I ask a question? Sure. Um, the Scott Farm went through a procedure a few years ago, and there were very uh, strict limits put on how many of such things they could have each month or whatever. Do you ever review that? Because it seems to me that every meeting the Scott firm is requesting something else. And right. I'm only asking it because of the neighbors that were upset because of traffic and things like that. I have not, but I will. I think it would be a good idea to review that. I think some of the events, like the Heirloom Apple one, wouldn't fall under that limit because it's farm related. 
I don't know where farm-related comes into this, and I don't remember the limits. I just remember there were, so you may be correct. I, I, I won't argue with you on that, but I'm just questioning that you read mm -hmm. what, what, what the limits are. Yeah, I will find those, uh, and I will email you also to let you know. What I think I have them at home. I don't have them here. <laughs> How about you email me? <laughs> <laughs> I think you all need to read Do you them. have official paperwork in your house, Joe? <laughs> I'm starting to worry. I have so much paperwork. Yeah, you better be careful. <laughs> all right. Um, no, I, I have so much paperwork for so many things. I've lived here for 50 years, and it just it piles up. Thank you. Finding it is another problem. <laughs> right. All right, so all those in favor of approving the three events on October 13th, October 17th, and November 14th, say aye. 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 Uh, any no's? All right, it's unanimous. I'll make a motion we adjourn as the Liquor Control Board and reconvene the meeting. You've got that down Second. bad. <laughs> Who seconded it? All those in favor, say aye. 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 And here we are back. It, we should have different clothes because it'd be funny. Um, we should all wear hats. I'm going to get hats for yeah. the control board yeah. that we're going to wear. Are those crochet hats with the beer cans? Uh, Don't forget the sleeves. The sleeves. Uh, so upcoming agendas. So we're going to have a budget meeting uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we'll post the subject matter if we have specific things on the agenda. It's going to be capital fund and highway budget next Wednesday night if you're interested. And then a regular meeting two weeks from tonight also will be here. Both of those are at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. I'm going to be out of town on the 16th, and I'm not yet sure whether I'll be able to join by Zoom. All right. Well, we'll be up. If you're here, great. I think uh, next week, and next week I have to be here by Zoom. Okay. If at all, I guess I have to go up to Burlington at the same time. All right. I think I can get. I all right. Get well, the Zoom will be up. If you can make it, great. Okay. If not, you're going to miss hot budget talk. Yes. Uh, anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. That's her other. And we are done. Yeah. <laughs> She's our procedure.